All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna do some structural dynamics or in this case, really vibrations. We're gonna look at a pendulum with a mass M and a massless rod. And we're gonna also assume small oscillations and do a problem where we just come up with an equation of motion using our basic dynamics that we learned as undergrads. And also go ahead, set this equation of motion up in what is called a standard or typical form and then determine the natural frequency and, and the period of our, our pendulum. So let me show you what this pendulum looks like. Pendulum is hanging from a ceiling or something with the hinge connection. We'll say it has a massless rod and at some instant of time, it is swinging over here. I'll put a lump as my mass, boom. We'll call this the origin of our system. And this is what's happening. This thing is just swinging back and forth and we're gonna assume very small vibrations or very small oscillations what we want to do is come up with the equation of motion for this thing now to do or write out an equation of motion I like to draw an external force diagram and set that equal to my inertial diagram so here if I focus on the on the mass M here I'm gonna take this exact same drawing and I'm gonna put another side right over here and I'm gonna say that these are equal. This left side is gonna represent my external force diagram. On this right side, I'm gonna call this my inertial diagram. And depending on the coordinate system that I choose, this is gonna have the inertial terms, the mass times the acceleration that's associated with this particle. I'm gonna use a, a radial and transverse or cylindrical coordinate system or these polar coordinates. You might have called them an R theta coordinate system. So as a refresher, if you had an origin here and I had some particle on a path, boom, like this, and the particle, let's say, is over here. If this is my origin, my positive radial distance or radial coordinate was just going out towards the particle. All it does is connect the dot. My particle could be anywhere. My At the instant where my particle is, this was denoted positive R and my positive theta going this way was always transverse to that coordinate. So here, my positive r at this instant, or my positive theta direction, my transverse, would have been this way. And then we could define all the velocity and acceleration vectors according to this scale or this coordinate system. And if I had an acceleration associated with this particle, let's say this particle had an acceleration of a, I could break it up into a theta component, a theta, and a radial component. And here, you know, this just from vector algebra, this a, this acceleration vector was a r plus a theta. You saw this in many ways. You might have seen this as where e r and e theta are these unit vectors that really just indicate that what is positive r and what is positive theta. And a r is the magnitude and a theta represents the magnitude of the, theta, of the transverse component and a r represents the magnitude of the radial component. And if you, you know, if you think back even more, you might have recalled this a r was r double dot minus r theta dot squared and a theta was r theta double dot plus two r dot theta dot. And we're gonna use this coordinate system to, do, to come up with our equation of motion for this pendulum. So here, here is my pendulum. And what I have here is if I look, if I choose this as the origin of my pendulum, and if I choose this as my theta equals zero, I'm gonna choose this vertical right here, I'm gonna let this represent theta equals zero, and my positive theta or my positive transverse direction, I'm gonna describe this way. My positive radial direction from the origin is straight out from the origin to the particle. My transverse direction would be perpendicular to that or 90 degrees and bam. And this is one thing I really like to do. I like to write or draw what I consider my positive coordinate systems, my positive horizontal and vertical, if you will, for that particle. I want it to be so nitpicky that I'm going to do it again on the other, on the inertial diagram. I'm going to keep everything parallel. So here's my transverse and here is my radial. Now the external forces that are acting on this, this particle has a mass M. So here I'm gonna say, boom, 
This has a weight, which is a force and technically a vector. And this thing also has a tension force in the rod. So if I were to cut it and draw a free body diagram of this rod, I would see that this cable or this rod has a tension force on it and it's acting on the mass. And these are my external forces. For the inertial terms, this is easy. I just have to do, I have two inertial components. I'm gonna have here, boom, M A theta, the inertial term in the transverse direction, and boom, M A R, the inertial term in the radial direction. When I do this inertial force diagram and I put this equal sign, I make it the right side, you know, I'm just using Newton's second law of motion, F equals M A. These can just be in the direction of what I defined as positive theta and positive R. Before I forget, let's say that this, let's say the rod, this massless rod has a length L. So now I just want to apply my dynamic equilibrium equations. Now there's two possible equations. I could do some of the forces in in the radial direction and I can do some of the forces in the transverse direction. Now if I do some of the forces in the radial direction it's going to give me a relationship for the tension force in the rod as my mass is moving but what I want is an equation of motion for just this mass as a function of theta itself and if I look in the transverse direction I would have the transverse component of the weight which would be this part right here, and this from the triangle, this right here would be W sine of theta. I would have a negative W sine theta is equal to the transverse component of inertia, M A theta, which we're gonna define as M R theta double dot plus two R dot theta dot. And because my rod is not changing any length, I have no velocity in the radial direction. So this term is zero. And here, this R right here is, is a constant length. It's a constant length L. So this is really just L. And we know that the weight is equal to the mass times gravity. This whole equation then just becomes minus or negative mg sine theta is equal to m l theta double dot right here. And if I bring this term to the right or I put the terms together, I would get m l theta double dot plus m g sine theta is equal to zero. And I can divide through by the mass, I can divide through by L, and I would be left with, and if I assume small oscillations, so this is what some people call linearizing the equation, because right now we have a nonlinear differential equation. So if I linearize this equation here, I would say that sine theta is approximately theta for very small oscillations. And then I would have an equation of motion that looks like this. And this is a single degree of freedom equation of motion where I have just this mass oscillating in the transverse direction. That's the only direction it's moving in this rotation around O is the only direction of motion and therefore a single degree of freedom system. And here, this this right here is what some people call the standard form or just a typical form. And in that typical form, we know that the natural frequency in this typical form was, you know, you might have seen something like this, x double dot plus omega n squared, where omega n represents the natural frequency times x equals zero. For us, this right here is, this term right here is related to the natural frequency such that if you just look at the two forms, the natural frequency of this pendulum is the square root of g divided by l. And this number right here will typically come out in units of radians per second. If I want the natural period, you just have to remember that the period, called this T sub n, is two pi over omega n. And this was also really just one over F, a cyclic frequency. And frequency, the relationship between frequency and omega n was really just a unit conversion. It was this F is equal to omega n over two pi, where this is in this really this number right here is a conversion of radians per cycle. All right, so this was just a unit conversion. So this this number right here outputted cycles per second, and so our period here, this 
our, our natural period is the amount of time it takes to complete one cycle. And so here, this in this case, Tn is 2 pi square root of L over G. So hopefully that was helpful and interesting. Keep it real, structure.